How frustrating was it that people took the um, took the ridicule on you and, and wouldn't just listen? Yeah, it was really, really frustrating. Uh, I mean, after a few years, I just kind of went in there and not the other people. I kind of you hear that. Uh, Skeptics. Well, I was a skeptic too, you know, but I seen first and then after that I just tripped on it. Kind of like some people get hooked on fishing. And, uh, yeah, it's hard to make people believe, you know. Tell me a bit more about what you used to think before you saw it. Think about um, Nancy's dad. Well, no, no, it's just like, you uh, know, I hunted uh, with my father since I've been a little boy. You know. I was doing trap and we hunted with hounds and killed lots of bear. And I just was a disbeliever. I said somebody would kill one of them, you know. If there were that many of them around, but I don't think there's that many. You know. I don't think there's probably over 3,000 of them in the whole Pacific Northwest. But, you know. And then, um, when you did see it, what did you think? Well, you know, I was coming around the curve in an old logging skirt, and uh, it was kind of an S curve, and uh, I was coming around one end of it, and this big foot was coming off on the other end, stepped right off into the road, just like coming around, I looked up, and he looked up, and there she got in the way, I didn't pay much attention, but I was ready to turn and run, you know, but, uh, Hair stood up on the thing's shoulders and head and just gave me a frown like it was going to jump on me. And I started backing away, just one step at a time, walking backwards. And then I hooked a heel in the shoe on a rock in the road and just about fell down. And when I got straightened up and looked at it again, it was turned around and was walking away from me. And I just watched it walk away just to run out of sight. And I went out of sight too. <laughs> so, <clears throat> what were you thinking at the time? Saying, oh God, I hope you don't jump on me, you know. <laughs> That's what I was saying, but I didn't have my good talking like that. Well, I had. What did you think it was? Well, I didn't know what it was. I thought, well, huh? it's uh, some kind of prehistoric man, you know. But uh, that was the first impression I got of it. And then when I kind of looked at it for a, a, a few seconds, I thought, no. Nah, it's not a bear, it's not a gorilla, I don't know what it is, you know, so. And then after, after your years of working in the, in the good night of the day, you, what extent would you go to tell people about what was actually out there? I'm thinking about the show you used to put in there. Mm -hmm. They're there, they're, uh, they could be anywhere, wherever you're at, at a camp, you know, and just, uh, you probably never see one. But didn't you used to go out to, um, uh, malls and have a show? Oh, it took, uh, yeah, uh, after a few years, uh, uh, <coughs> a lady of the Walla Walla College up there at Walla Walla made me a couple of life-size ones. Yeah. And uh, I traveled around with what evidence I had in those to the malls around the area up there and showed people what they looked for, you know. How did they react? Well, I got a lot of good reaction out of it from some people, and some people are still skeptic, you know, and that's when they're skeptic. Well, why do you think they're going to have skeptics? Well, you're going to, you know, you're going to be skeptic to you see one yourself, or somebody brings a body in, you know. So, surely that day you filmed it, you must have thought, this is it, they're all going to believe you now. Oh, yeah, I thought, oh, you know, I'm going to really be vindicated here, you know, but... Still goes on, you know. They, they, don't, uh, they don't believe you. It's uh, got to have that evidence. But surely that's it. evidence enough. You filmed it, it's working. Yeah, it's evidence enough for me, but not for them, you know. Well, it's going to have to have a body. It's, uh, it's coming down to that, you know, a blood sample, DNA sample, or something, you know, that really proves. So when people see that footage, what do they say then? Some of them believe it's not known. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, he did that, you know. Mm -hmm. Some people think he might have actually faked it. Yeah, they do. Some people do think it's been faked. But, uh, prove it. You know, that's what I say. You know. mm -hmm. Well, fake to me, I, 
the brother might give me a video camera that uh, he had, and once I got a hold of that, well, I started packing the thing with me, and I said, well, I'll get some footage of it, you know, if I see another one. I finally did see it, you know, enough to get some footage, but it's uh, still in the... Uh, you tell me a bit about the circumstances of that day, what, what, what happened? <clears throat> well, I had a map at home that I tried on for 15 years. And uh, that's where I've been seeing Bigfoot, where they cross the road, where they stop to these springs and drink water, certain times of year, certain time of day. And uh, I got to look and watching that map, and it's starting to make a pattern on where they were traveling. So I started going into deep up springs. It showed on that map that they'd been in there nine times, you know, at that time of year. So I started going up there every morning. Uh, went there before daylight, and I'd sat till dark in the evening, you know. And the one particular morning, I, my daughter had trouble with her car, and I had to do some work on it, so I was late. It was like 10 o'clock or so, the time I got up there. And I drove into this old spring, I had a little old Datsun car, I'd fixed up a big tire on it and stuff where I could get around up there, you know, cheap on gas, and I'd chain the thing up and just go, you know, up those old cheap roads and stuff, and I drove right into that spring, and apparently there were two of them there drinking when I drove in there, but they ran off, they went up into the bush. I got out and was looking around, and there's their tracks in the mud where they'd been, and still had muddy water in their tracks. So I know that they'd been in there, you know. So I heard the brush popping and stuff up over the bank, so I come up over the bank, and there was one of them going around the hillside there, it's just some other dead snags and stuff. And that uh, made me really nervous, but I stopped a couple times and looked at me, and I was like, oh, mm -hmm. It come at me, but it, it never did. It just went on around through the bush and went up over the mountain. I followed it for a ways, and then I decided I better go get some friends of mine to come back with me. And that's what happened. I came back and looked all day and followed the thing, you know. You never did see them again. And that's, uh, that's the last sighting I had. Did you cast the prints from there? Oh, yeah. yeah. This is one of them there. It's right in the spring. The other one, you know, I bet it's somewhere smaller than Probably a mother and a son or daughter, probably. Yeah. It was quite a bit smaller than she was. But I never got any film of it, you know, I just I was so doggone excited and stuff, it, it just, uh, you just get that way, you get really nervous and stuff when you see one of them, and I've been mm -hmm. better off, I've just shot one of those years, but I just don't want to kill one of them, you know, it's, I don't think it'd be a good thing. You, you don't sound too excited on tape, but is that maybe because you're not kind of an excitable guy anyway? Well, it takes a lot to kind of excite me, but you know, over the years, uh, you know, I've been messing with it for a long time, and I, the first time I was really excited, you know, but after I found out that I don't think they'd harm you unless you provoke them into it, uh, I didn't get too excited. And I was kind of out of breath and breathing hard and stuff, you know, that was kind of steep in there where that spring was, and I was climbing up a little bank, and, I was breathing a little hard, but no, I, I didn't get really too excited. I just didn't want to, uh, I had a real big belly like she was pregnant or something. I mean, I didn't want to just walk around the bush up there and run on to her. You know, and maybe have her jump on me or something. So you kind of feel that you've seen it so often that you're used to seeing it. Actually, that's why. <laughs> yeah, well. No, I'm sure they've seen me more time than I've seen that, and, and it just wasn't, uh, it's exciting to see them. I get, I get really excited after I get excited right now, but not like I would the first time. Can you describe in detail about the way it looks and signs and color? Well, the, this one up there is uh, kind of black, the dark, dark brown or pretty black, and uh, 
his skin was kind of gray, dark gray color, you know, it kind of looked like this. You see these gloves with gray leather, kind of like that. And it's probably that, the one I filmed there, D Duck Springs, was probably seven foot tall. Probably weighed, I don't know, 600 pounds, maybe more. And I thought some of them, uh, you know, that scene before, probably weighed up to a thousand pounds. It could have weighed that. Yeah, yeah, they have long, long black hair, uh, stripped from down over their head, down to between their shoulders, it's probably five, six inches long, and then the rest of it, maybe two inches, you know, all over the body. Do they ever look pretty similar? Well, yeah, the ones I've seen up there were pretty similar, but uh, I think they were just a family, you know, probably different ones look different, I don't know. Uh, pictures I've seen of different ones that people took look a little different, you know. Of course, we don't all look the same either. Yeah. How do they look? They come a lot stooped over and bent knee, just kind of trudge along, you know. But they could make a big step, make a step over 60 inches if they want. That's yeah. pretty good. I can't, uh, there's no way I can make a step like that, you yeah. know. And, you know, some people say it looks like a, a man in a, a kind of zip-up suit. Does yeah. it? No. Mm. Well, you can see the muscle and stuff moving their arms and their, you know, their legs and stuff. No. I'm not saying there's no man in a suit. Uh, what's your foot? I mean, if, uh, you know, if there is somebody out there walking around in a suit, who do you kill? There's people out there that shoot you, you know. Is that why you would never do it? Because, I mean, sometimes you could think, I've seen it so many times, you know, just a little embellishment, isn't that, you know, maybe just a bit. You know, when I had people tell me, oh, man, I'll give you a million dollars. Name your price, you know. Well, I could have had that. I just, just didn't want to shoot it. You know, just, if I killed them, they, uh, be like me walking out here shooting you, you know, why should I go out there and shoot you just because you're out there walking around in the bush, you know? But what about embellishing some of the evidence just to make, sh you know, because you've seen it so many times, you know it's there, but it's hard convincing people. So kind of just a little embellishment of evidence to say, look, surely now you're going to believe me. Yeah, yeah, I don't care if they believe me or not. Everybody has their own reason for stuff. I don't care, I wish they'd just leave them alone and so let them be on their way, you know. No effect, they should ever walk. I wouldn't take a picture of one right now if they're not on the road down there. I could see it. I wouldn't. So you would, uh, this is kind of a controversial question, you wouldn't put Dwayne in one of those uh, <laughs> suits just to... No. No, he never did want to even mess around with it. He took so much ridicule at school over and stuff, but, but neither one of my boys even tired to go up to mountain for it. They're just not that type of people. They don't do something like that. And I wouldn't either. They don't have to. You know, they're there. People out there enough where they travel through, you might eventually see one. You know, so. Can we see that? Sir? Let's see what's the way. Okay, it's that kind of interesting. Yeah, I guess I'm just going to do it. That's right. Okay. You've been up there so many times. What kind of sounds would you hear that you thought maybe this is them? Well, they make all kinds of sounds. They're really great mimickers. Uh, they can mimic anything. Uh, they can sound like coyotes. They can sound like uh, uh, women screaming. They can sound like peacocks. Uh, they grunt. They make all kinds of noise. Even like pigs. Uh, and, you know, they grunt and stuff. I have their sounds and stuff on tape. Uh, yeah, they, they can mimic. About anything you want, I suppose. They have their whistle, they whistle sometimes. I think that may be communication, you know, some way they communicate to you. I'm not sure, but it could be. Couldn't just be the animal. Yeah, it could just be the way they do it, too. You know, you know, just help. But, you know, when they're feeding, they make a fucking noise when they're feeding. You know. 
And snails, what kind of snails would you get out there? Well, they stink sometimes, not all the time, but uh, sometimes I think when, uh, when you uh, excite them, you know, like come around the corner or something and around a bush uh, and, and just walk right into one, uh, it'll throw a smell off down, like a skunk does, but uh, the sickening smell, you know, strong urine. Smells kind of make you want to throw up, but uh, otherwise, sometimes you see them and they don't make any sound. Yeah. I need to spend so much time out there. Did you ever come across any of droppings? Yeah, I have. Hair and a five gallon bucket half for once in the freezer, but I wanted to dry it in the oven, but the boss there wasn't in. He said, You're not sticking that on a cookie sheet and drying it out in the oven. I wanted to deck it on it. She said, no, no, it stunk so bad that <laughs> they'd probably run out of the house in there, too. She wouldn't let me dry it in the so. Why do you want to dry the scat? I mean, just wanted to keep it so I could send it here and there and get it. I sent it anyway, you know. And uh, as a matter of fact, I sent some to Scotland Yards in England, but uh, I never heard anything back from it. So. What kind of things did you send off for testing, and what results did you get from them? Well, I, got, I sent hair samples off, and I sent uh, scat samples off, and they always come back, you know, and uh, it's not human. It's not uh, any known animal that uh, we have on record. It's something different, so, you know, that's the best they can do. Yeah. Can you tell me about the first time you met Jeff Melvin? Yeah, yeah. First time I met Jeb was up in Walla Walla. Yeah, he's pretty nice though. I've seen him and I've met him three or four times now. But did he turn up all the way looking dead? Yeah. I can't remember. Well, I believe that the reason he believes is because the day he came to see you, you took him out there and then and showed him some tracks. Oh, yeah, we found some tracks. But I could probably take you right now up there and find the tracks somewhere. So. This is kind of a bad time of year. To February is better. You know, in the middle of February, if you go up there and, like I said, I've been drawing a map for 15 years. I could probably look on that map and we can go find some tracks. Excellent. Um, can you tell me about what you've given up? I mean, you know, some people say you, you're a hoaxer. Why an hoaxer? And, and you've got a great answer for that, haven't you? Yeah, you know, they said that uh, when I left the Blue Mountains up there, well, Bigfoot would leave too, but they still fine sign of him up there, you know? So what's that tell you? It's not me going up there. It was the, yeah. great, the great thing you said to us when we came to see you about, you know, the fact that you've given, you've given up two businesses, you've given yeah. all these... Tell me what you've actually given up in your, uh, your I, I had a smoked meat business. In Camas, Washington, I sold that. Had a home in Camas, Washington. I sold that. She had a home that her mother gave us. We sold that. And I spent uh, a couple hundred thousand dollars of my own money looking for Bigfoot. Uh, you know, I'm not going to just spend that because I haven't made over the 17, 18 years, I haven't made $20,000 over it. So why would I want to? Well, my money, you know, I didn't think there was such a thing out there. No. Excellent. Um, just a couple more. Yeah, did you ever change um, your methods of, of trying to track this thing down? Oh, yeah. I've, I've dug 15, 20 foot holes in the ground up there and made traps and Seems like when you do something like that where they've been coming through, well, they move down the canyon a ways and start coming through there, you know, it's like, they, it's like they're sitting out there in the bush watching you do it. <laughs> and they may be, you know. Yeah. It seems like they know everything you're doing when you're up there. What did you find the most productive way of seeing what people finding evidence? Of just get out there by yourself and be quiet and just go sit, you know, all day long and watch, you know. They're in that area. You eventually see them. Why do you think you see more than other people? I don't know. I spent, uh, like I said before, I spent 4,000 hours a summer in the bush. That's a lot of hours. You know, if you're out there every day, you're going you're gonna to see something. If you're there once a month, well, you might see something. You might not. 
And that's it. That's all the answer I have for that. That's a great answer to What extent do you think the media's influenced the public perception of Bigfoot? Nah. I haven't. I don't even have an answer for that. You don't like the way the media portrays you? <laughs> no, I don't. Well, yeah. Most of the time they'll get what they want from you and then they'll go back and print what they want to print. You know, so. That's why I quit doing a lot of interviews and just quit talking about them. What about them, like films like The Legend of Boggy Creek and things like that? Do they paint a bad picture for someone trying to prove that this thing really exists? Uh, some of them, probably. Uh, they do. They could be, you know, something back uh, in that country like that. They see them all over. They see them in the prairie country and you know, in every place. So, you know, I know they travel. I had a... Uh, I found a footprint up there in the Blue Mountains. Uh, that was the uh, same Sasquatch made the track in, in Northern California in, in 1967. And I had the same track I found up there in, in uh, Walla Walla in the 90s. You know, so those things travel. They travel all over the country. Could just be fake. You can uh, copy of the one? No. Okay. Um, what do you think it could be then? Like I said before, uh, it's, it's something, uh, maybe the missing link, you know. Not an ape. Not an ape, no. Not an ape, they kind of look like an ape uh, in the face, some of them, but uh, and some of them don't, so. Like I said, we all don't look like, you know. Okay, what would it take to find it? Kill it. Mm, but I'm not going to do it. That's, uh, that's the only way you're going to prove it. What about, what about the new whippersnappers with their thermal imaging cameras and things like that? Do you think that, that, that modern science might find it? Well, they should, you know, if, uh, if they work at it, you know, they don't have to work at it. Those things are intelligent. A hell of a lot smarter than what we give them, you know. They've been here a long time and they'll be here a long time after we're gone, you know. If I could just ask you, when you're on your deathbed, what will your opinion of the Sasquatch Bigfoot be? What what part of your life has it played? It's, it's there, you know. It, uh, I swear on it, you know, on my deathbed. But uh, what I took pictures of was big, but, you know, but nothing fake about it. They're there. And, uh, you know, people spend enough time out there where they're going, where they're traveling through, you'll eventually see them. But everybody has their own way of, you know, of hunting. And it took me a few years to just figure out, you know, that I'm better to go for myself than take a bunch of people with me, you know. And that's, that's about all I've got to say about it. <laughs> This is some of the those little ones tracks that's in here. I come back up here today to cast these. They look like they're about about nine inches long. Pretty good little tracks. They sure a little one. Went right up this old trail. Run around up there to his mommy, I guess. Yeah, I'm gonna mix up some plaster here and pour these. 
Now I got my cast made. And four little tracks here. Thirty-two inches between the stride there. Yeah, I'm gonna look around a little bit more, let these dry. 